Today, we're continuing our discussion on the Hermetic Principles with the Principle of Rhythm. The Kybalion says, Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. What does this statement tell us? Let's find out. Hi, Matt. Do you robots have rhythm? Of course we do, John. I got out my drum set just for this occasion. Want to hear me play? That's enough. Enough. Let's get started with an overview of the concept. Sure thing, Mr. Dull and Grumpy Pants. As we've discussed in previous videos on Hermeticism, everything vibrates and everything has opposing poles. Adding to this movement, the principle of rhythm states that everything in these motions also moves in a pendulum-like fashion. Are they saying it goes completely from one pole to the other during this swing? No, it doesn't have to go to extremes, it's just that it goes toward one pole, then the other. Also, this rhythmic movement is not haphazard but follows a precise pattern, a cosmic dance of balance and change. Just as the tides ebb and flow and the seasons wax and wane, so too does every aspect of existence experience this rhythmic oscillation. These rhythmic patterns are not merely random occurrences, but rather, they represent the underlying pulse of nature, a fundamental law that governs the dynamic interplay of energies. How do Hermeticists think that the principle applies to human behavior? They believe that because this principle is universal, it is reflected in the undulating waves of human thoughts, feelings, and moods. Your minds oscillate between focus and distraction, your emotions swing between joy and sorrow, and your moods fluctuate between enthusiasm and apathy. They further believe that by recognizing these inherent rhythms, one can be empowered to navigate the complexities of one's inner mental and spiritual landscape with greater awareness and understanding. I see. I suppose this fits into the transformative narrative found throughout Hermeticism? Yes. They'll explain that by recognizing these natural rhythms, one can learn to work with them instead of against them, thereby optimizing their productivity, creativity, and well-being. They believe that for those who seek personal growth and transformation, the principle of rhythm offers a powerful framework for understanding and working with the cyclical nature of life's experiences. By learning to attune oneself to these rhythms of life, a person can learn to either flow with the current, or even in the case of mastery, prevent being carried along with the flow. Are they saying that a master of the hermetic arts can escape from the principle of rhythm? Not really, they're just saying that if one can learn to recognize the rhythm that they can consciously choose not be affected by it in a particular situation. However, the back and forth flow will continue so there's no escaping it and there may be a price to pay due to the law of compensation. What is this law of compensation and how does it apply here? The law of compensation states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It sounds like they're borrowing from my old friend, Sir Isaac Newton. Of course. After all, Newton had a keen but hidden interest in the occult, prophecy, alchemy, and yes, hermeticism. I suppose that goes to show that even the most celebrated scientists can be influenced by esoteric traditions, and that the pursuit of knowledge often involves exploring alternative avenues of thought, both empirical and philosophical. But let's get back to how the law of compensation works. They see it going beyond just the physical realm where even thoughts can generate an effect that is proportionate to the original action. So in essence, they're applying the proverb, we reap what we sow. Yes, or to use another proverb, you can't have your cake and eat it too. To put it another way, they believe that if someone has a low degree of, say, enjoyment, that they will also have a low degree of suffering. Likewise, if someone has a high degree of some attribute that the universe will compensate by giving them a low degree of something else. That sounds like a description of karma. That's correct. The concepts are intertwined to some degree, probably due to that intermixing of ideas along the ancient Silk Road we mentioned in the last video in this series. Hermeticists believe in reincarnation, so they believe that the consequences of this compensation may be felt in one's next life. Likewise, they think that the experiences generated by one's past actions or lives provide lessons and opportunities to evolve spiritually, break negative patterns, and create a more enlightened future. 
I don't know, Matt. We're getting mystical again. Reincarnation? Yes, they believe that rebirth is part of this principle of rhythm. They see it as a process of learning, growth, and purification with the eventual goal of the soul ascending through levels of spiritual development and achieving union with the divine. It sounds like they're implying that there are cycles of transformation that are in play here. Yes, it's their idea of cyclical, rhythmic patterns in the universe that apply to the soul as well, which experiences repeated cycles of birth, death, and rebirth until it breaks free from the cycle. Also, reincarnation in Hermeticism is not entirely about the physical body. It encompasses the evolution of the soul and its consciousness through various realms of existence. Wait a second. Didn't they say that there was no escaping this rhythm of back and forth? Come on, John. You know they always have an answer. In this case, it's ascension through knowledge. Hermeticism places strong emphasis on acquiring gnosis, spiritual knowledge, as a key to overcoming the cycle of reincarnation. In their view, through knowledge and self-mastery, the soul can elevate itself and transcend the limitations of material existence and become one with the all, the divine. It seems that they're indicating that in spite of the rhythm principle, a soul has the free will to change its course through knowledge, self-observation, and right action. Yes, they don't view it as a rigid deterministic system denying free will. Instead, they suggest that choices and actions operate within this rhythmic framework. Therefore, one has the agency to make decisions, but those decisions play out within the larger patterns and cycles of the universe. By developing an understanding of the principle of rhythm, one can recognize these patterns and navigate them more skillfully, anticipating shifts and making choices aligned with the natural flow. It seems that this may really break down to someone making a conscious choice versus simply reacting in reflex. Yes. While the rhythms of life are inevitable, one has the power to choose how to respond to them. In their view, one can react unconsciously, swept along by the tides, or can make conscious choices to harness the rhythm's energy and create a desired outcome. Let's circle back to the transcendence idea. How do they see someone transcending the pendulum swing? Ultimately, the hermetic path is about transcending the pendulum swing of duality by developing awareness and mastering one's inner self, whereby one will be unaffected by the external fluctuations. While this doesn't mean a master practitioner of Hermeticism will escape the rhythms of life, only that they will no longer identify with them or become controlled by them. Also, people are not wearing enough hats. Let's move on to see if there are any practical applications of the principle of rhythm. Okay, John. I know you love your Monty Python references, but onward to practical applications. In the realm of relationships, the principle reveals the dynamic interplay of closeness and distance, intimacy and independence. By understanding the natural ebb and flow of these connections, one can navigate the challenges and celebrate the joys of interactions with others. So like Harry Chapin put it, love is like a circle. Channeling your hippie uncle again, John? I knew you would find a musical reference to throw into our discussion on rhythm. Sorry about that, Matt. You know I couldn't resist throwing in a song. I guess I'll wind up today's discussion on that note. In general terms, the principle of rhythm provides a framework for understanding the cyclical nature of success and failure, growth and decay. Just as the phoenix rises from the ashes, so too do we experience periods of decline, followed by renewal and transformation. By embracing the full spectrum of experience, we can learn from our setbacks, celebrate our achievements, and develop a resilient spirit that can weather any storm. While the principle gets couched in occult language and esoteric concepts like reincarnation, it can still help us to find harmony within the cyclical patterns, the oscillations, and equilibriums that shape our world. Do you see rhythmic circles ups and downs in life, or do you see it as linear? Do you think there's a balance or rhythm between poles or only random chaos? Let us know your thoughts on the principle of rhythm in the comments. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next episode on the Hermetic Principle of Cause and Effect. You know, I'll have to include some references to the Matrix in that one.